All right, uh, as we, as we kind of wrap up this session of living in the Spirit, we've talked a lot over the last season uh, about the Spirit-filled life. We've talked about the, the what, why, where, who of the Holy Spirit, what He is, what He isn't, who He is, who He isn't. Uh, and this is tonight's kind of our last real meat discussion uh, around that. Again, next week being a worship uh, time with the ladies and some, and some fellowship. Um, much of the discussion, and I always like to keep things practical, as practical as we can. Right? It's one thing to, to, to come and get a lot of head knowledge and write down a lot of words and write down a lot of scriptures and a lot of, a lot of good things. And we, we, ha- we have had that, and it's wonderful. And we've had some practical things as well. It's one thing to say, hey, here's how I ought to be. Here's how things should be, right? I mentioned it maybe on uh, Sunday. You know, we talk about here's what it looks like to be standing in the end zone with the touchdown pass. Tonight's going to be a little bit more focused on, on the how piece. How do, we, how do we get there, right? We said a lot of good things on what we ought to look like, what we ought to do, what our godly behavior should look like, how... Or, or what living in the spirit looks like the the mountaintop um, the mountaintop perspective of that and we've talked a little bit about the how but tonight we're going to focus a little bit more on the how some uh, 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 not so much results oriented but ha- but how do we get there how do we live a more empowered life how do we live in the spirit more effectively because again we have our spiritual nature, capital S, when we're indwelled with the Holy Spirit. But at least at this, at this time and space, until we, until we meet the Lord, or until, you know, until we meet the Lord, uh, uh, whether we pass from this life to the next or he comes back, whatever comes first, we're still carrying around this fleshly body. So we still have our fleshly nature and the spiritual nature are kind of at war with each other. So, and, and, and really, we can yield to the Spirit or we can yield to our flesh. More times than not, quite honestly, we yield to the flesh. How can we better yield to the Spirit? How can we better access the Holy Spirit? How can we live in the Spirit and be in fine tune with the Holy Spirit? Sometimes the Spirit might be yelling. The, the Holy Spirit of living God might be yelling, but you can't hear it because there's too much stuff in the way. You know, if you get a... Uh, I always go back to the maybe the experiment that we did in middle school or elementary school uh, where you got a, you know, two tuning forks together. And if you got one kind of vibrating and humming and you, uh, and you put it next to the idle one, and then you take the, what, what does the idle one typically do if it has the same resonance? It starts vibrating and making a sound, right? So as the Holy Spirit's vibrating and resonating, how do we, the dead tuning fork, how do we get vibrating and resonating as well? Because sometimes there, there's, you put a piece of cardboard in between it, and that ain't happening. And a lot of times our flesh is that piece of cardboard that we put between the two tuning forks. So how do we, how do we remove that, and how do we better be resonating with the Holy Spirit? Uh, and we say it all the time, and you hear it all the time. What are the things we ought to do? Pray. What else? Read our Bibles. True. Absolutely true. Pray and read your Bibles. We all, you know, we, we say that, but, but, but how else, right? We're going to talk a little bit, how else beyond it? Because I've talked to a lot of guys where, you know what? I've read seven versions of the Bible. I've read that paragraph 10 times over, and I can't get that to sink in. I'll try reading it on tape. You know, I'll have, the, I'll, I'll have uh, Morgan Freeman or something read me the Bible, and, you know, John, the, John, the, the revelation of John, uh, and I, re- I listen to it. That's how it, it can, I can tune in a little bit better to it because I just can't sit there and read it. I'll read the same thing 10 times over and I'm, I start thinking about the weather. Or I start thinking about, you know, the, the break job I got to do on my 300 or whatever the case is. Uh, prayer, you know, also I'll, I'll be in prayer. Uh, and <laughs> how often are we just like our mind just starts wandering? You know, our mind just wanders, and all of a sudden, I'm not even praying. I'm not even praying anymore. Uh, but, you know, I'm thinking about that. i got to write that down. Hold on. You know, or the phone rings, you get a text, and you're, 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 you're so far away from the Lord, you don't even know it. So, yes, 
We ought to pray and we ought to read our Bibles. But that's, that can be, for some of us, that can be just scratching the surface on how to access uh, and get in tune with the Holy Spirit of the living God within us. And God's wired each one of us differently. I think, it'll be, uh, I think it would be wise for us to realize how he's wired us. And some things may work better than others. For me, when I, for me, if I'm really in the spirit and I'm reading the word, the, it, God has, has gifted me in such a way where the, the, the concepts, the theological points jump off the page. I mean, they, they just do. And that's, I, I'm, the most I've learned is from me the, and the Holy Spirit of the living God, supplemented and complemented by the preaching and teaching of the word. But quite honestly, it's been me one-on-one uh, with the Holy Spirit and, and the word uh, late at night um, or early in the morning. That's where I've gleaned um, the most. But that does, in the moment... Right? So I also want to be yielding in the moment to, to, hey, the Holy Spirit, I don't have my Bible with me, so, but, but somebody's on the side of the road or there's a conversation I'm engaged in. But the word, uh, I, can, I can recollect the words, uh, I don't, maybe not chapter and verse, but concept, uh, quote, quote scripture to myself, quote scripture to, the, to, to other people. Um, but how else beyond prayer and study what, what, for you guys, for you guys, what else makes the spirit alive within you outside of prayer and Bible study? What other things, what other techniques, what other methodologies, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you do that makes the spirit alive and you can resonate? Worship music, wonderful, Absolutely. Dialogue, dialogue, fellowship. Okay, good, good. Worship music, dialogue and fellowship with um, other believers for sure. But even if you're saying words, biblical words minus chapter and verse, but biblical concepts even to just, you're, you're, you're saying them, uh, even believer, non-believer. But yeah, when you guys can start bouncing ideas off each other, and we do this, you know, these discussions after the, after the message, it certainly you know, helps. And you have a synergy amongst people, a one plus one equals three type of thing. Uh, so worship, dialogue, what else? Accountability. Yeah, so staying engaged in that fellowship and dialogue and accountability, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. I'd say it's just connecting and getting out in nature. Mm. That's a good one. Solitude with the Lord. Yeah. Being alone with the Lord. Shutting out, shutting out the outside influences. Right. Yeah, and his creation. Wonderful. It's good, man. Um, so just like you know, just, just like anything, I, uh, I played golf for the first time over uh, this year at the retreat on Friday. And I hit the ball okay. I hit the ball okay. D- Dave and I played both days together. I, my drives were all over the place, kind of. Um, but my irons, and my irons were pretty solid, uh, decently. And I hadn't swung club in, since, since last year. I, I mean, not even got it out of the bag and swung it. But I've played a lot of golf over the years, too much golf, admittedly, uh, over, over the years. And you know what I was able to do? I was able to get up, and I was able to address the ball, and I was able to, like, have a functional golf swing. What do you call that? Like, muscle memory. Muscle memory. If it was the first time I ever swing a club, it wouldn't happen. Right? I try to hit it like a baseball or something. What do you do with this thing? You throw it up and you try to hit it that way or however it is that you do. But no, I had a, there's a muscle memory that I had that I was able to get up and functionally hit a golf ball for the, for the most part, Dave. Um, so, you know, we, we, we build up our bodies for the things that we 
enjoy, that we engage in. We, you know, we train. We watch what we take in our bodies via diet, uh, you know, exercise. We know there's a difference between knowing and doing. We know that if we diet and exercise, more than likely our physical body is going to respond in a favorable manner. We're, you know, whether you take it over the top and you turn into, you know, and then you start injecting stuff or whatever it is, that's not what I'm talking about. Just diet, exercise, you're going to be in better physical condition. Your body's going to be more robust. And we do that. And sometimes we, we can, it can become an idol even at, you know, at, at times. And I'm gonna re uh, uh, I'm gonna reread a verse that we read up at the retreat about this, and I think John read it a couple weeks ago um, on a Tuesday night, and it's First Timothy, chapter four, verses uh, seven and eight, and uh, what the Bible says about that is discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness, for bodily training is just slightly beneficial, but godliness is beneficial for all things since it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. Discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. Bodily training, great. Slightly beneficial, but godliness is beneficial for all things. So just like we discipline our bodies, just like I'm able to go up and hit a golf ball without swinging a club for six months, the Bible also says, Uh, in one of the Psalms, it says, I have hidden your word in my heart so I might not sin against you. It's kind of that same concept as muscle memory in your golf swing is when we hide God's word in our heart. Again, maybe you don't know it in chapter and verse, but you know the concept. So when uh, uh, something comes up where you need to use that that word against uh, satanic attack or uh, for, for righteousness, whatever the case may be. You've hidden God's words in your heart. You have that muscle memory, if you will, on the truth of the scripture. I spent a lot of time and a lot of money on my golf game. Not a whole lot to show for it over the years. It's I certainly dropped down on the priority list. If we were to spend a portion of that time on our spiritual well-being, exercising our spiritual muscles, hiding God's word in our heart so we might not sin against him, that muscle memory, if you will. Romans 12, 2 talks about not conforming to the pattern of this world, right? But be transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind. A lot of people want to do like, God, what, what do you want to do with me, Lord? I just don't, under, I don't know what God wants me to do. I don't know what God's will for my life is. Listen to this next verse. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Only after we renew our mind are we able to test and approve what God's will for our life is because we get in tune with the Holy Spirit. So it's, it's, it's transforming ourselves by the renewing of our mind. It's this muscle memory for our brain. It's exercising our spiritual muscles instead of our physical muscles. So we introduced this concept uh, over the weekend, and for those of you not here, we talked, them, we talked about it, there being spiritual disciplines. And most, most of us, most of the church body understands prayer, and study in their Bible. And, and hands down, those, we ought to be doing that. We should be doing that. But I'll tell the story again briefly. When I first started uh, seminary many years ago, uh, God called me to seminary, uh, called me deeper into his word. And it's a, there's a lot of credit hours there, and there's a lot of dry material in seminary, man. Oh my goodness. It is, it's just like roll your eyes back in your head. Very, very dry. The, one of the classes I took and, and Rob Williams taught on this subject uh, last week when I was out was spiritual formation. So I took a spiritual formation class and it was, it was really wonderful. And it was a lot of tools and techniques on how to access the spirit of the living God and how to reflect on that and try, you know, in different, different things. And I needed that early on in my seminary career because the rest of it 
70% of it was extremely dry and extremely boring. So without that access and living in the spirit, what are you doing this for? I, I totally would have failed. I totally wouldn't have finished it. And I, did, and I hardly finished it as it was. I mean, it was really, you know, crawling across the finish line on that thing. Uh, and, but to be sustained by the spirit of the living God through the boring and the mundane, that was the only way that I was able to finish that. And a lot of us, our spiritual walk, it ain't always going to be the mountaintop. You're not always going to be, you know, uh, um, cultivating you know, sometimes we water, sometimes we, you know, we're not always going to be reaping the harvest. And that's kind of the exciting part when you, you know, and, and maybe some of us will never, ever see that. And that's just the way God has it planned for us. How are we sustaining? And maybe he's called us to park cars and sweep floors or whatever the case may be, whatever you're called, your act of service is, uh, without, without the fire of the Holy Spirit, it's, it's, uh, it won't sustain you. Like, okay, it's great for a few weeks, but what am I doing here? This is, this is not, this is, this is, it's great at first, but now it's just kind of, eh, it's getting pretty boring. It's kind of cold out here, and man, I got rejected 17 times, and you know, how, so, so that class was really helpful for me to sustain me through seminary and, and, and up until this day. And what was really beneficial for me was a lot of techniques on, many different techniques on how to, other ways outside of prayer and, and, and studying the Bible to commune with the Holy Spirit of the living God. Now, some of them stuck and some of them didn't. So we're going to, one of the things that we're going to be doing this summer is, as an, as an option, is we're going to continue some Tuesdays. Uh, Jason's, Jason Clift is going to champion it for the most part, but we're going to walk through this book, Celebration of Discipline. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the different disciplines that, and they're not all, they're not the be all end all in here. And it's a, it's a fantastic, you know, what I did with this is there's 12 disciplines in here. So I spent a year of my life doing a month on each one of these disciplines, you know, like, let me focus on this for a month and really see what, um, you know, see what the spirit does through some of these things. So I'm going to, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, each one of these here for the remainder of our time. Uh, say a few words about them. And I want you guys to just talk at the tables about outside of prayer and Bible study, how else, like practically, are we accessing the Spirit? And maybe these things, you're hearing them for the first time. Wonderful. What sounds attractive? What, will you, what would you commit to trying to do? Um, and so it's broken down into a few different categories. It's broken down into the uh, inward disciplines, the outward disciplines, and corporate disciplines. All that, mean is, all that means is doing them together uh, amongst the body of Christ, like corporately on, on Sundays or amongst a large group of people. So we certainly, for the inward disciplines, there's certainly prayer and Bible study. So we're not going to talk too much about those because we hit those with a, with a huge hammer every week. There's meditation. It kind of goes along with study. Don't spend too much time on that. Uh, but the other one is uh, the inward discipline is fasting. I think it's a lost discipline somewhat in our current culture. There's a ton of fasting when you, go, when, you look through the, when you look through the Bible. And maybe in our current culture, Western church, it, the liturgical churches, you, you, Catholic, uh, Lutheran, they might look at the time up to Easter right? Lent, if you will, as the time of, of fasting. And that might be all they do all year. Now, if you've been part of this church for any amount of time, we've had seasons of prayer and fasting for a certain um, outcome, let's say. For, uh, hey, we're going to pray, you know, how would God call you to help support the box building? Or how would God call, we're, gonna start, we're starting small groups, or there's been numerous campaigns um, over the years. So that's kind of a, 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 an inward and a corporate, you know, fasting together. Uh, I will say this, I, I'm not, I don't actively, it's not part of my normal spiritual repertoire, but once in a while, and it's not about twisting God's arm. It's not like, I'm not going to eat, Lord, until you deliver this thing for me. Well, good luck with that. Um, it's not about twisting God's arm. It's just about replacing a need whatever that may be, technology, food, water are the typical 
fasting elements. But when you would desire that, that element, you would focus you know, on the Lord. So call it a time, a season, uh, a day, a week, um, or uh, there's, you know, there's, there's right and wrong ways to do it, of course, and this will go through that a little bit. But maybe in your guys' experience, I mean, anybody have uh, like fasting as a part of their regular repertoire, spiritual repertoire? Yeah? Do you find that very, uh, I mean, is it mundane? Is it helpful? Is it, is it, Yeah. And uh, it just talked about them. And then I promised that every one, one day a month I would always fast for them. So every month, like ah. there's a day where I will always, one day every month I'll always fast. Wonderful. Yeah, that's it's the right. It sounds like the right way, you know, and that's the right the right focus. So I don't think a lot of us, as a as a percentage, are actively um, fasting. If you haven't, it, it, you're looking to access. It might it it might resonate with you. I, you know, I don't know. I would encourage you to I would encourage you to try it. I would encourage you to walk in that uh, with the right doing it the right way. So it's don't just go in blindly. We want to we want to exercise these the right way. It's going to walk us through that a little bit. Um, so shifting to the outward disciplines, a couple of them we said, you know, in here, brother, you said solitude, and that is a wonderful, I think that, you know, even a retreat like we had over the weekend was great, but it really wasn't solitude unless you were Matt Rosso, uh, napping all Saturday afternoon. He had a lot of two, double nap. Yeah. A lot of solitude, brother. A lot of solitude. And, and, uh, you use your name. You probably heard him, heard him sawing logs over there next door. You know, pulling a Fred Flintstone, the whole camper going. Uh, but no, you're absolutely right. Solitude in, in creation. And I'll tell you, in today's modern day and age, it's hard. It's hard to be still and know that I am the Lord. Because we're just our, our the way that society uh, drills us into be busy and, and have a hundred things going at once and five balls up in the air. And when we're done with this, we have to have an agenda and our calendar and all these things. Man. Get under the stars. Get out uh, in, in, in creation. When you look at a flower, when you look at a baby, when you look at a pet, you know, what, some of these things. And you have to, it takes a little bit of time to actually let the outside kind of darken a little bit and let the, uh, um, let the quiet settle in. And it's almost scary because you want to leave because it doesn't feel right. So you've got to kind of blow through that wall a little bit and then just really get into the spirit. I'm not talking all mystical and stuff like that. I'm, I'm talking uh, access to the living God and just having him, you know, focusing on him uh, in solitude. And certainly could be in your, could be in a closet, but I think even better in creation because God is displaying himself, um, you know, over and over again. Uh, simplicity is a spiritual discipline that we, I think, at least I don't embrace and uh, I did for a month. It was hard, man. <laughs> so was like, yeah, that didn't work for me really well. I'm going to, you know, I got to go get complex somehow. But I mean, are we, li- you know, are we living a simple, um, you know, more of a simple life? I think you take it all the way to the, all the way to the left side of that thing. And you're looking at like, you know, some of the, uh, you know, people pulling horses and buggies and stuff like that. And that's really a simplicity of, you know, uh, of life. I mean, so that's a, that is a way to deny ourselves of certain things. It's not fasting. It's just living a simple life and taking resources and, and using them elsewhere. Submission is a, is a huge one where, you know what? I'm just going to submit because we can wrestle with the spirit or we can be looking and saying, uh, we're, if we're disobedient to the spirit, a lot of times the spirit just, we don't hear him as much. It's that cardboard in between the tuning forks. Uh, but once we start a season of submission, it's almost like, you got to put the head, you, you, it's, it gets too loud because you're, uh, you're in tune with the spirit and you're 
in an, in an act of submission. And so like one thing leads, you know, one thing leads to another and you go and kind of go down the rabbit hole of submission, if you will, be careful, be careful. You might end up in a cave wearing a monk, wearing a monk suit, chanting some weird stuff at some point. But, uh, I say that kind of in jest, but, um, submission and really just and, and service and we got a lot of service service is another outward discipline um hey just just try new things uh how are we serving the body how are we uh we talked a lot about we talk a lot about spiritual giftings and uh, are you exercising those do you know what they are maybe maybe not do you know do you have any acts of service uh for the body or even for your uh lost you know, neighbor, people at work. I mean, just showing up to Ed's house uh, in two weeks is really service. Uh, what do you, you might, might be mundane. You don't know how the Lord's going to work through that at all, but maybe a season of service. I will say over the years, some of the times I felt closest to the Lord are some of the times that I've been in active ministry service, whatever that case may be. Stuff like you know, just sign up. I don't have to do anything special. I don't have to get up in front of anybody. You know what? I'm just going to help park cars this weekend. What, whatever it is. Acts of service. Are you always looking to be served? Right? So if, we're, if we go through a season of service with the intent of communing with the Holy Spirit, it's a spiritual discipline. And we have these corporate d- disciplines, things we do all together. Uh, worship, you know, being one of them. And so for some, for some guys, man, they just they lose it. Uh, during, during worship, and they just feel in touch with the Holy Spirit. For some guys, they can't wait for the worship to be over so they can hear the message. I mean, you have to explore some of these things and figure out how the Holy Spirit built you, how the Lord built you, and what's the best way for you to resonate with the Holy Spirit. Your spiritual disciplines might be different than yours. Almost guaranteed that they, that they will be. Many parts, one body. Worship is a fantastic... Um, discipline that we, and some people serve in it, right? They're gifted in music and they, and they serve in it. There's other forms of worship than just music. Sometimes we couple, hey, we're going to worship now. Well, does that mean we're going to play a song? And, you know, there's other ways of worship. We could get down on our knees and just thank the Lord. We could be in a season of whatever benefit, whatever blessings that we have, whatever blessings that we're experiencing. Are we worshiping the Lord for that? Are we thanking the Lord for that? Do we see creation and we just worship the Lord for it? Or it's not always music, right? But music is a piece of that. But just worship in general. A lot of times we acknowledge the Lord, but are we really worshiping him? Do we lay prostrate at his feet, physically speaking, and um, uh, anecdotally speaking, you know, are we worshiping uh, the Lord in all facets, not just music? Um, celebration is one that we do corporately. Somebody gets baptized, you know, what's, what's usually the natural response right after that when the guy comes out of the water? Applause, right? How do we celebrate with that person? Uh, man, you know, we walk, come up around them, embrace them, make them feel loved, or something happens within the church body, something wonderful happens, let's celebrate that, because sometimes we need to see the victory in order to be encouraged. There's so much, uh, uh, there's so much defeat out there, let's revel in the victory for a moment. Sometimes it's good to smell the roses and take a minute and, and just and look and see what the Lord has done and celebrate that uh, together amongst each other. Man, this guy uh, did this thing or, or has victory over this in his life or this marriage was saved or whatever the case may be or, or a marriage or a new, ba- you know, a new baby's born. Let's celebrate that uh, together. So celebration is a spiritual discipline. Uh, guidance, which goes along with accountability, fellowship, uh, and, and meeting with people is, is, is guidance. Are we getting guidance from one another? That's actually a spiritual discipline. Hey, I have this, I have this problem. How should I handle it? Um, go to the right people for that. And then um, the last one here I'll mention for a corporate discipline, and then we'll let you guys go at it at the tables, is confession. Again, I think, that's, I think confession is kind of lost a little bit in, in we'll say, the, the modern evangelical Bible church. We don't talk about that a lot. Or you might have grown up and you had to go to confession every week. You know, or you had to go, hey, you know, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. You know, okay, say ten Hail Marys and, you know, all your sins are going to be forgiven, right? That's, there's, uh, um, there's, confession was more, was more of a thing. And I think a lot of us feel free in a sense because we don't have to go to confession every week. But maybe we should somehow, just in a different way, right? So, so we spend a season 
spilling some things out to not, don't do anything foolish, <laughs> all right? Because you can wreck some stuff. I'm not saying do anything foolish. Um, but in a wise fashion, in a biblical fashion, the right way to the right people in the right environment, um, are we confessing our sins to one another? Are we confessing them before the Lord? Uh, there's freedom in that, man. There's freedom in that. And sometimes we get it. Nobody, when we come and go on Sundays and even on Tuesdays, a lot of times we're not saying, okay, it's time to confess, it's time to confess our sins. We don't do that. And it can, you can go for a long time without confessing. And I think it fills that cardboard up between, between, uh, between you and the Lord. So there's a lot of different spiritual disciplines beyond prayer and Bible study, guys, that might just really work for you and might really just awaken the, the Holy Spirit in a way that you've never had it before. So I would, there, I, would encourage, I would encourage you guys to, you don't have to come to the thing this summer, but if you do, we're going to talk more about that. Uh, but there, do, it, do some things on your own. Uh, if you want to, you know, keep a, a thread dialogue going with some guys uh, here, or you want to just get online, again, do it carefully. But it's not prayer and Bible study. Yes, those are the foundations. But there are a lot of other things that we can be doing to awaken um, the spirit within. So I'll say the same thing I set up at the retreat. If, you're gonna, if you want to commit to come over the summer, um, there's a few of these books here. You can take one and be a part of that. If you don't want to commit, to it, but you want a book, it's a $10 book, take it with you. It's, I found it extremely helpful in my own personal walk. Uh, so with that, let's spend the rest of the time at the tables talking about things beyond prayer and study uh, that, that have been effective or non-effective for us in our um, trying to get in communion with the Holy Spirit.